Welcome back. We're in lesson 68. Lesson 68 is not so difficult as talking about how to use a scientific calculator. Hopefully everybody has a scientific calculator of their own to use. Um, so basically the book tells us that whenever we're using a calculator, that it's, it's not necessarily a crutch so much as it's a tool to get rid of mundane operations for us. And that whenever we type something into the calculator, we should kind of have an idea of the answer that's going to come out. Like we should know if it's going to be around 300 or 400 or a three digit number or a, a 10 digit number. We should know enough about the math work that we've been doing to kind of guess at what it's going to be or to know what the numbers mean as we type them in. So that being said, sometimes there are times when it's hard for us to figure that out, um, especially when we're dealing with negatives. So there is a positive negative key on your scientific calculator that will help you with that. And I want to show you how to do this. We're just going to jump into the first problem. It's a scientific notation problem, 68.1. And the problem is this. Uh, we have... 40,652 times 10 to the negative 8. And then we have 0 0.0, three zeros, three zeros, three, two, four times 10 to the 15. Well, first of all, we know we have got to reduce this and simplify the scientific notation because it's not exactly in the right format for scientific notation. We've got way too many decimal places. So we've got to move this one, one, two, three, four places to the left. So that's going to mean that those that's positive. When it's to the left, it's positive. So that's gonna be adding four places right there. So it's gonna be four point 0.652 times 10 and negative 8 positive 4 means negative 4, right? Let's do this one the same way. We have the decimal place here. We're going to move to the right, which means it's going to go negative. When, when we move the decimal to the right, it's a negative exponent. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Ooh, sorry. Control Z. I'm sorry, one, two, three, four. We just want to get behind that first whole number. So that's four. So that is a negative four. All right. So it's going to be 3.24 times 10 and 15 minus four is 11. So that is how we do that. Now, what our book is telling us, let me pull up my calculator here. It's telling us that we need to kind of wrap our head around what we should expect the answer to be. So we see, first of all, we have a four and a three. So we can kind of guesstimate that it's going to be somewhere around 12 um, for these two numbers. And we already know that 10 times negative four um, or 10 to the negative four and 10 to the positive 11, we're just going to add those two integers together. So we can go ahead and we can set up our first result with our times 10, negative 4, positive 11, that's going to be a positive 7, right? Um, oh, I'm sorry, this is negative. I meant to tell you that. This is negative, so that means this is negative. So how do we do a negative this, right? So I want you to look on your calculator right here, or it could be over here somewhere. You've got a positive negative sign. This changes, excuse me, this changes the value from a positive to a negative on your calculator. So what we want to do is we want to say 4.0652 negative times 3.24, 3.24 equals negative uh, 13.17. That's as far as I'm going to go. Negative 13.17. And if we round this, we get negative 13.2. Now we know 
So that's, that would go here, negative 13.2. We know we don't want two. We only want one place here. We don't want to have two places. We only want to have a ones place. So we need to move this to the left, which means it's going to be a positive. So plus one. So our final answer is going to be negative 1.2 times 10 to the 8, right? So because we estimated it that it would be around 12, we see that we're really close to that. 13 to 0.132, this would have been 0 1.2. 1.32 is really close to that number. So because we kind of had an idea of what it should be coming out, when we got the answer, we were like, okay, yeah, that's pretty good. But here's what I say. I say, when you're doing your calculations, okay, do them twice. Just do them twice. So 4.0652 negative times 3.24. And write the number down the first time. Write it in the margin of your paper. Write it in your scratch notes. Do like I did here and write it down over here. Then do the problem again. 4.0652 negative times 3.24. If you get the same number twice, your calculation is more than likely correct. Unless you have a complete lack of understanding of how to do the calculation, if you know what you're looking for, you know what you're doing, just do it twice. You get the same number twice. When you have complicated numbers like this, it's probably going to be right. And that's most of what Lesson 68 is all about, trying to get you to estimate the problem and then compare what the calculator told you with what you expected it to be. Uh, you can do that and still just do it twice and it will still be just as accurate. All right, let's move on to 68.2. We're just going to do another one of these like this. All right, so we have... 40,652 times 10 to the negative 8 over, oh, another one. Oh, it's the same number. Joy, joy, joy. You just love it when they give you the same numbers over and over again. All right. And, oh, this time this is positive, so we don't have to deal with a negative sign. That's great. Now we still have the same thing. We have to put this into the proper scientific notation, which means we've got to move the decimal. So to the left, one, two, three, four. That's plus four. So that's 4.0652 times 10 to the negative four over one, two, three, four. That's minus four. 3.24 times 10 to the 11. All right, same thing. We're going to divide and we're just going to do this. We're just going to bring up our little handy dandy calculator and we're going to say 4.0652 divided by 3.24 equals. All right, and I'm just going to write to the first place that you round it. So the first place that you would round would be the five. All right, this five would round this up to a three. So I'm gonna stop there. I'm gonna stop at 1.3. All right, so I'm gonna write 1.3. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do the problem again, just to make sure I did it right. 4.0652 divided by 3.24. This rounds to 1.3, so I got that right. Now I just have to combine these. And we know that when we bring this up, it becomes negative. So that's times 10 to the negative 15. Whenever we bring an exponent from the top to the bottom, the sign changes, right? And we know that that's what we do in scientific notation is we bring the exponent up to the top and this goes away. So this would be your final answer. All right. So let's move on to powers and roots. I'm going to clear the page. 
We remember that a rational number is a number that can be written as a fraction of integers. So the numbers 0 0.43, 3.43, and 4.6, repeating, this is repeating also, are rational numbers that can be written as 43 over 100, uh, 343 over 100, um, one third, and four and two thirds. All right, so those are all rational numbers. Every rational number can be written either as a decimal number that has a finite number of digits or a decimal number whose digits repeat in a pattern. Conversely, a decimal numbers that either have a finite number of digits or whose digits repeat are rational. Um, scientific calculators are programmed to find only roots or powers of real numbers that are real numbers. Imagine that. So we're going to evaluate this right here. This is 68.3. All of that to say that we're going to try to trip up the calculator. 3.28 and the square root of 50.42. Actually, it's not the square root. It's the 3.28 root of 50.42. So we need our calculator. I told you all this lesson was all about how to use your calculator. So it says we always estimate first. I have no clue how to estimate that. Um, the book is giving me some ideas. I really don't care. Um, it says that 3 cubed is 27 and 4 cubed is 64. So it's going to be somewhere between 3 and 4, right? That's what it says. 3 cubed, because this is close to a, a cube. 3 cubed is 27. 4 cubed is 64. So it's going to be between these numbers. That's what that's what this is going to be. It's going to be somewhere in between here. So basically, um, just do the calculator twice. That That's what I recommend. Always just do the calculator twice. If you want to estimate on the front end, that's fine. But the calculator is going to give you the right answer if you use it appropriately. So what we're going to do is we are going to type in 50.42. I'm going to type in this. The X always comes first on your scientific calculator. So you type in the X, you hit the button you want, and then if there's a Y value, that's the number you type in next. So 3.28 is the index, that's the Y, X, Y, alphabetical order. Then you hit equal. 3.304, 3.5, 3.5. Would be our number. But we're going to stop at the first three. So the answer is 3.304. We knew that it would be somewhere in between these two numbers, right? It's somewhere in between those two numbers. So the thing to do now is guess what? Do it again. So remember, we enter the x first. So the x is what's on the inside of the radical. So we enter the x first. So that's 50.42. We hit our button. Now we enter, enter the y value. And the y value is on this button. It's the index. So we enter the index. 3.28. Same number that we got before. We know we got it right. All right, and that is the answer. Easy peasy. So we've got some more to do using the calculator. So we have 9.26, and it is to the 4.58. And then we have 9.26 to the negative 4.58. So I'm not going to estimate this time. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do it twice like I've been doing. So first of all, let me introduce you to your 
X, Y exponent key. So again, X is the value that you enter first. Y is the value that you enter second, and then you hit equal, okay? X in this case is gonna be 9.26 because that's the number in the bottom. 9.26 is our X format. We hit the button, X, Y. And now we type in our um, exponent, the Y value, as you can see illustrated here, 4.58. Now we hit equal. Woo, 26,734. And we'll say that's 0.9. Or we'll say 0.88. That's fine. 26,734. 26,734.88. We'll leave it like that. All right. I'm going to do it again just to double check my answer. So I type in the X. The X is the one in the bottom. 9.26. Now I hit my key. Now I hit the Y value, 4.58, and then I hit equal. I got the same number, so I did it correctly. All right, let's try this one. Again, X is the number in the base, or the bottom, whatever you call it, 9.26. We hit our key, and now we type in our exponent, 4.58, but we need to make it negative. So negative, all right? And now we hit equal. All right, so that's 0 .00040 is 37404. One, two, three, four zeros, and then that was three, I'm oh, sorry, three, seven, we'll just do three, seven, four because that's a bunch of decimal places. Let's check it again. Let's do it one more time. Clear that. And we're going to do 9.26 is our base. And then 4.58 negative is our exponent y. We hit equal. We get the same value. 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros and 3, 7, 4. So we know we did that correctly because we got the same answer twice. So that's what I recommend that you do. You just check it. You, you get the answer and then you do it again. And if you get the exact same answer, then you, you've probably typed it incorrectly and you, you're doing it right. Now, that being said, it is possible to type it in wrong exactly the same way twice. So the best thing that you can do is understand the math that you're doing. Understand exactly what this is. Understand what this is. And then reading the scientific calculator will be a lot easier because you'll be able to see that X is the base and Y is the exponent, or that X is the radical and Y is the index. Okay, understand what those things mean based on what you know about math, and then you can match them up. The other thing you need to understand is that X is always first, and then Y is the second number that you enter, and then you hit the equal sign, okay? Uh, so first, second, first, and then whatever key it is that you need, then the Y, then the equal. Now, sometimes you have to adjust positive or negative on one of these. So if it has to be a negative sign, you type in the number, then you hit the exponent, or not the exponent, but the positive negative key, then you hit the format key, then you type in the second number, and then you hit the equal sign. But in general, this is how you would use the X and Y functions on your calculator. All right, that is all we have for Lesson 68. And I will see you guys in Lesson 69 next week.